just in terms of personal betting, um, how do you go in terms of like staking, bankroll? Are you trying to make a certain amount, you know, per month? Um, how have you tried to refine that over the years? Uh, how have you approached that part of, of your betting? So my, and, and I actually find the writing up the previews and getting everything out there and, and you know, working through my staking, it's like I'm doing this methodically and then at the last step, sending it out to people as well as a means of kind of keeping track of where I'm at and, and how I feel I'm going. Um, I, I don't set clear goals in terms, so I treat, you know, one unit as 1% of um, the bankroll um, and bet between zero or 0.5 to, to five units. But I, and this is where it's a little bit tricky when you're delivering content, particularly to people who maybe aren't as aware or playing the same long game, perhaps that I'm playing, is that, you know, I'm staking based on what I perceive as value. So I'm not, you know, if I put five units on something, I think I've only made one five unit selection this year and it was on team to beat Nadal at the Australian Open just because I felt that there was so much value in that price. Doesn't mean I thought he was 80% or 90% likely to win. I just thought that at that price, that there was more value there. So look, it can be a little bit more volatile, but you know, at the end of the day, you know, if you stick to your staking and you feel confident in your process, um, I'm probably gonna repeat what a lot of other people have said and you know, what's been up on the hub more recently as well. The key thing is just to record whatever you can in whatever detail you can to be able to find where your edges are and, and make sure you keep going back over that and, and figuring out where your strengths lie. Um, and another thing is that, that I've tried to improve over the, the last couple of years in particular is, and I think this has been mentioned in the past with some other interviews is around being comfortable letting, letting plays through and, and, not making a play and, and not feeling like you've missed out if, if they do go on to win. I think I found that particularly early on when, you know, if I was getting a lot of questions about matches, I'd be more inclined to go digging places where I probably wouldn't dig if I didn't have that account and, and that interaction. And I think that particularly during the early years, that was something that I found myself doing that, you know, I'd perhaps make a selection and, and not be able to, to stick to it. So, um, you know, stick to, to my process and what I want to do. So you'll see that, you know, everything that I do now, I don't post anything unless there's a full preview with a stake. Um, and if, you know, I'm, I'm trying to do some more selections or previews where I feel like this is what I think will unfold, but this is why I'm not making a selection for X, Y, and Z. Um, in terms of how much making per month or anything, it's, um, look, I'm, I wouldn't, I'm not going to confess to being the biggest wager in the world. Um, it's, I, I prefer and, and I enjoy the process and, and, and trying to build things gradually, which is um, not understood by everyone. It's probably the best way to put it. Yep. As so, some of those five unit bets, uh, I'm pretty sure carried me through university, mate, as a, as a poor <laughs> student. Seeing those come through on the Twitter timeline, it was, it was like Christmas uh, some of those days. Um, just on that though, it, just in terms of momentum in, in betting, I, I feel like you're one of the the more sort of momentum type bettors that I've certainly interacted with in my time at Betfair the last couple of years. Do you feel it um, when you're on a bit of a hot streak and you know you consider maybe staking up uh, at all? Um, you, you can feel it in terms of your interactions. I think through social media when you're running it through a you know, as a, through an account, um, that there are, there are peaks and troughs that come with it. Um, I think at the end of the day, it kind of comes down to how, you know, how comfortable you feel and, you know, looking through you know, my spreadsheet and, you know, there's been some peaks and there's been some troughs and, you know, it, it is quite volatile because I am making selections based on value and, you know, you're putting five units on something, not, you know, five dollars that you know things can things can move quite quickly to the good, and things can move quite quickly to the bad. Um, yeah, I think it does come on in, in in waves a little bit, and I think that's the same for a lot of people who cover tennis. In that some some weeks you can just have a really good grasp and understanding of the conditions and where things are at. In other instances, you can 
you know, and I would probably treat it as a week to week thing that you know, some people will spend you know, Monday through Thursday trying to, trying to get a read on things and then perhaps overcompensate and go the other way. And then all of a sudden you're at the final and there's nothing to really work on within those, those conditions. So there have been obviously some very, very good runs and there's been some, some very, very bad runs, but you know, I think, as I said before, on those bad runs, you know, particularly being able to go back and, and look through your process, why you've done what you've done. You know, there can be some big swings when you're playing, you know, some bigger prices. And, you know, I've had a number this year already that you, know, you can put three units on one feast to pick up a bit at nearly $9 and he can have triple match point And, you know, all of a sudden it's a big swing between a win and a loss. Um, but yeah, it's, there is momentum at times, but, you know, hopefully it's, it's catching things at, at, at the right time. And, you know, you, there are weeks where you do feel more confident than others. And I think that just comes back to experience and, and conditions and, you know, how much effort you're going to put in to be able to, you know, I, I think it's, it's, it's certainly a sport where the more effort you put in, the more you, you get out of it. So I think it's just trusting your, your process a little bit. If you've got that, that form and, you know, you've got a spreadsheet with a lot of data there that you can go, you know what, I can, you know, this is my strength and this is what I might go back to and really hone in on and, and start to kind of build up there again. But I don't think I go, I never go too aggressively with staking. It's always been within 0 0.5 to five. There's no 50, 100, you know, 7,000 unit selections to kind of blast your way out of a hole or anything. But I think that's the, the advantage of tennis. As I said before, it's a blessing and a curse in a way that there's so much on, you know, your, your next match can be, in a minute or in a day or, you know, whenever you want it, there's enough opportunities there to kind of build and, and continue to improve. So just in terms of some of the resources that you would use, I, I know the flash score is, is a very popular sort of like uh, tennis yeah. scoring app. Is, is there other, uh, you know, websites you're looking for, for stats uh, just in terms of vision, you know, tennis isn't the, the easiest sport to, to watch in the world is what are the, the sort of go-tos uh, for you? Um, yeah, flash score is a key one in terms of keeping keeping track and, you know, particularly the last year or two when they've been able to introduce point by point scoring. So even if you're not watching it, you can get a bit more of a feel of what's happened. Um, something else I use that's just a way of, you, know, you, I think you just pay a one-off subscription for on-court tennis. It's just a little program that you get updated. It, you know, auto-populates all the stats and what's been going on in the past. Um, you know, in the past 24 hours or whenever you last updated it. I think, you know, if, if you're looking and, you know, I have a large subjective component into what I write and, and how I cover off tennis. For those who are more um, ratings or analytical in terms of, you know, looking at whole break stats and particular data, you know, probably the, the place to look at is um, Dan Weston, who does some, um, I think he does some work for Betfair UK, um, but also, yeah, he's, is um, got a rating subscription service that, you know, it, it would be worth getting in touch with him. And he's got a, a book on, you know, tennis trading. Um, otherwise, you know, there's a few different places around it. Again, it's, you don't want to go too far down any rabbit holes. There's a number of forums where, you know, you'll get a lot of opinions and thoughts on matches that, you know, I try and steer clear of. Um, it's probably something that I got drawn into a little bit too much early on. I'd rather make my own decisions about, what's going on. It can be hard to find streams. You know, you're paying a fair bit. You know, ATP tennis TV is separate to WTA TV and not everything's available in Australia. Um, I've got KO at the moment, which they're seeming to be covering the quarterfinals onwards of the women's tournaments. So that's actually quite a handy thing if I want to, you know, if I'll take a look at flash score and go, oh, I want to have a look at what happened in, you know, this portion of the match and you know, you can just hit plus 15 and you're on to the next point or close to it. So, you know, using, using all little bits and pieces, but, you know, I don't religiously gravitate towards any particular program or, or website. Flash score is the key for scoring. Um, but yeah, it's, there's a lot of content out there and, you know, the, the Grand Slam websites are probably a great place to be able to get more information about, you know, winners, unforced errors and, that information that isn't as widely available but um outside of that yeah it's it's a bit of a mixed bag yeah 
and, and just wrapping up, mate, in, in terms of, you know, like people that might be watching this might be, you know, inspired by your story where, you know, you, you're not turning into, into full, you know, professional punting, but you love grinding out, you know, the earn on the tennis and, and turning it into a proper hobby. For those who are trying to do the same, um, what would you recommend to them in terms of just starting it and getting to maybe where you are? I think the key thing, if I can give one one piece of advice, it's you know, set up set up a base for your work. And when I say that, I don't mean just have a Twitter account or a Facebook account or an Instagram account or wherever punting, you know, wherever betting related content is going. Have yourself a base that, that's yours and that you have ownership of, and it's you know you can always treat it as like here's my CV of everything that I've been able to do. But just start writing. I think, you know, there are a lot of people who will just post you know, their selections and, you know, there are a lot of people who are very profitable doing that. But, you know, if you're wanting to go down this path of, you know, trying to you know, build a bit of a base and, and with your work, I think the key thing is to just, you know, even if you just set up your, a very basic website, and, you know, be able to draw back to that. People love knowing why you're doing what you're doing or why you're betting what you're betting. I found it as a means of, you know, managing the response that I probably get from followers that I felt better about myself having put a full preview out there as a, well, this is why I've done what I've done instead of saying, you know, ATP challenger event, one unit on you know, Novak to beat Stan. Um, but I felt then that I was doing my due diligence from my end and, no, I think just stick to your process, particularly on social media at the moment. You can see there's a lot of people who are, you know, flying very close to the sun for long periods, doing a lot of things that, you know, that's great. If that's what they want to do and, and play the short game, then that's completely fine. There are other people out there. Um, and I can attest to that based on, you know, people who have been following for a long period of time that are interested in the long game. They're interested in knowing why you're doing what you're doing. And, you know, if, I said at the start of this, if I got one person to watch a bit more tennis or, you know, profit on tennis, then that's fantastic. And, you know, what? I don't care if it's someone sending me you know, a picture that they bet a thousand dollars on something or they put, you know, five cents on something. It really doesn't matter for me at the end of the day. It's, you know, I feel, you know, I enjoy the sport. I enjoy covering it. I enjoy writing it. And look, some people enjoy reading it. So I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing and see where it all takes me. Steve, uh, thank you very much for your time today. It's been great. Uh, you'll be able to find Steve's content on the Betfair Hub for as long as he wants to keep sending it um, because it's that good. Uh, thank you very much for your time, to, uh, time today, mate. You've been great. Perfect. Thank you very much for having me.